What's up, you guys? My name is Sophia, and I am Sophia the Boss on Instagram. I do astrology, and I do personalized astrology where I share how the transits affect me, and I also do birth chart readings. So if you wanna know about the transits and how they're affecting you, I can help you with that. Just contact me in the DMs. So I was watching YouTube, as I do. I'm a YouTube fan. I've been following YouTubers since 2011, especially Miss Jenna Marbles. And I noticed that on her podcast with Julian, they did a podcast reading their birth charts. And as an astrologer or an astrologer in training, I was so excited. I, I almost couldn't watch it because I was like, I was like, oh my God. I was just overwhelmed. I was like, first of all, I can't even believe that they're actually doing this. I want to say thank you to both of them for taking this request from your viewers because your sun signs are hilariously incompatible on the surface. You know, Virgo and Aries sun is, is like I said, hilarious to watch you guys <laughs> be compatible with each other despite that. Um, but yeah, so you always talk about that and I was curious. I have been wanting to do the synastry of both of you um, because of that and how beautiful you work anyway. Following her for that long, I know a little bit about her personality to make a good judgment call on this. So I'm excited. Okay, so first thing that I wanted to get to was some clarification issues when they were reading the birth charts. What I noticed was that they needed some clarification on the houses. So when they would say like moon in two, what does that mean? Well, it's actually moon in the second house. So your ascendant, which was also something that they needed clarification on. They're like kind of skipping over the ascendant, but I'll read why the ascendant is very important. Um, Ascendant is the first house. So the first house is ruled by Mars and it's also the sign, it also is ruled by the sign of Aries. And be because Mars is the ruler of Aries, Mars rules that house. So when you go from the first house to the second house, second house is going to be ruled by Venus because it's the Taurus house. It's second in the zodiac. So they actually go in order, the houses. So third house would correspond to the third sign of the zodiac, which is Gemini, ruled by Mercury, and so on and so on and so on. So, when you have, um, for example, Jenna's ascendant is in Sagittarius. And not only that, but when you look at your ascendant being Sagittarius, then you think, which planet rules Sagittarius? And then you realize, okay, Jupiter rules Sagittarius. So then you can look at where Jupiter is placed in your chart to get a little bit more information on the Sagittarius placement altogether. If your Jupiter that rules Sagittarius is placed in a very good spot, it's going to thereby make your Sagittarius a little stronger of a placement. For example, Jenna's ascendant is in Sagittarius, and so when you have Sagittarius rising with Jupiter in the sign of Pisces, that's awesome because Jupiter rules Pisces and it rules Sagittarius. So your Jupiter is in the imaginative, all-embracing, and compassionate sign of Pisces, suggesting that altruism and unselfish giving are innate and natural for you. Your love of the ocean and or foreign travel may play an important role in your fate. So that's combining the traits of Sagittarius and Pisces because they correspond. So I hope I didn't lose you yet. <laughs> I'm just gonna read through Jenna's list here of her planets. Um, before I do that, I wanted to mention something about personal planets. So what are personal planets? <laughs> well, they are the planets that go the fastest 
they have the fastest orbits around the sun and they're closest to the earth. So the personal planets affect us in our daily lives the most. So when you ask the question like, which planets do I really need to focus on? Because this is a lot of information. Um, you would look at your personal planets. Okay, so we're gonna look at the charts right now. So first I'm going to look at Jenna's chart. We're gonna start in the first house. So like we said, it's a Sagittarius rising. So Sagittarius begins her first house. So she has her Neptune and her Mars there. So her Mars is exalted in the sign of Capricorn, which is great. And her Neptune is in fall position in Capricorn. That's her first house, right? And um, she has Moon and Aquarius in the second house. Then we go to the third house, which has Jupiter, which is in its rulership in Pisces. So your Jupiter is feeling really good at home um, in the third house. North node in Aries in the fourth house. We have fifth house, we got no planets in your fifth house. We have sixth house, you have Chiron in your sixth house. Chiron represents your deepest trauma and the way to heal it. We have in the seventh house, black moon Lilith. And then we move to your ninth house, which has sun in Virgo and then Mercury in Libra. That's all in your ninth house. And then for 10th house, you have your south node, Pluto, and Venus. Mars rules Scorpio and Pluto, but Pluto is the higher version of Scorpio. So you have, when you think of the traits of Scorpio and how intense that is, the higher octave of that is even more intense. So that is conjunct your Venus. So this is something else that I would recommend that you look into because um, it can affect your relationships. So then you have your 12th house. All right, so I'm gonna move on to Julian's. So Julian's ascendant is in Cancer. So Cancer is ruled by the moon and the moon in his chart is in Scorpio. So we look at Cancer rising with moon in Scorpio, right? And that is your moon in Scorpio suggests that though you may appear mild, and motherly or soft, you can be truly ferocious in your defense of anyone or anything that you care about, especially those who depend on you. You are the mother tiger when threatened. Deep sentiment and compassion for the suffering color everything for you. Words may be difficult or not at all important to you. What matters is soul, mystery, and allegiances of the heart. Okay, so Chiron and Leo in the first house. He might have had trouble figuring out exactly who he is and how to express himself. Then he has um, Jupiter in detriment in Virgo in the third house. So his fourth house, he has Moon in fall in Scorpio in the fourth house. Um, Moon is a sensitive sign. It doesn't really like to be in Scorpio. That's why it's um, in the fall position. Pluto ruling in Scorpio in the fifth house. So that's a really strong placement. Uranus, Neptune, 
in the fall position and North Node in Capricorn in the sixth house. And then Saturn rulership and Black Moon Lilith and Aquarius in the eighth house. Then he has Mercury and Mars and Aries in the ninth house. Sun exalted, Venus in detriment, and Aries. And then his south node in Cancer in the 12th house. When you look at your synastry, here's what I do, right? Because it's there's a bajillion different ways to look at the way that your planets connect, right? So what I do is I look at the conjunctions between planets in both of your charts. So, because to me, those are the strongest things that matter um, because conjunction means that the planets are in the same space in the sky. And it creates a bit of harmony and a blending of energies. So, I look at those first and then I look at oppositions. And I don't really look at sextiles or trines because those are all just like fun gifts. They're usually positive. Um, you could definitely look at your squares. Um, that will help you find out a little bit more of the conflict between you guys. I feel like oppositions are more intense than squares um, as far as conflict um, that it creates. So for conjunctions, right? We have Jenna's North Node conjunct Julian's Venus and Sun. So Jenna's North Node, life purpose and direction is in the same area as Julian's Venus, his love and relationships and what he values, and his son, which is just who he is as a person. Jenna's Mars is conjunct his Neptune and Uranus. So her Mars is driving his Neptune and Uranus meaning like Neptune being his imagination and what he does as far as creativity and his um, Uranus represents his rebellious revolutionary side um, unique and sh and kind of quirkiness so her Mars is fueling <laughs> his Neptune and Uranus energy which I think that's beautiful Jenna's Pluto is conjunct his moon. So his feelings and emotions are in the same space as her intense Pluto energy. Jenna's Neptune conjunct his north node. So Jenna's imagination and creativity is driving his life path and purpose. I think we can all see that's literally true. Jenna's Jupiter is conjunct his Mars. Jenna's Lilith is conjunct the South Node. Ho ho! So this is where we have to really look closely, right? This could cause a little bit of issues. Jenna, so your Black Moon Lilith Is conjunct his south node. The south node represents things that we brought into this life from our past life. Um, traits that are, are no longer used to our life path. Traits that will take away from you reaching your life path. Stuff that comes so naturally to you that it's the autopilot version of you when you're not thinking. If you let this bl black moon Lilith energy overtake you, it will it will not be good for Julian's life path at all. So just keep that in mind. <laughs> um, I don't see you guys as having a toxic relationship. In fact, I find you to be the couple to emulate 
you are what I want. I want somebody that is interested in doing this stuff. YouTube understands YouTube can help my career. We could do it together. We can work from home, like independence, making money online together. That is, to me, that you guys have the perfect relationship. So I just want you to know that that's how I feel about you. And me delivering this message is just in the stars. And <laughs> okay, so here's something very important, right? Placements and synastry in these birth charts are not set in stone, right? The same way in our genes, we have recessive alleles. So we can have something in our genes, we could have something in our chart that can be problematic, but if it's not activated, it's not gonna bother you. It's not gonna be of any problem, right? So same way here. You could have this black moon Lilith in the seventh house, but you have to know how to work with the energies. So if you're completely, if you read up on not only Black Moon Lilith in the seventh house, but Black Moon Lilith in Cancer in the seventh house, you know, do your little exhaustive research as you will. You know, just, just know about it. Know that it's a recessive allele in your chart and just be aware. And don't let it make you crazy. Don't let it be the forefront of anything of your mind. Just, just understand that's why some things may feel like really, really spot on and other things might feel like, what the hell is this, right? Um, it just depends on how it resonates with you inside. And then furthermore, um, certain things in our chart may not become activated until later in our life. So depending on the sky in each year, you could have a negative aspect never activate and then one year because of a certain transit that's happening, it becomes active. So just keep that in mind as well. Some traits that you think would never apply to you will apply to you later in life and you'll be like, wow, wow, that's, can't believe I thought that didn't apply to me back in the day. It's so obvious now, right? The last thing being that Jenna's moon is conjunct his Saturn and his black moon Lilith. You know, that's also something to look at. <laughs> the fact that you have two black moon Lilith conjunctions, it is interesting. Jenna's moon is sitting right in between his black moon Lilith and Saturn. The way she feels might have influences of those energies. Just look into both of your black moon Lilith placements. Look that up and then kind of look at those conjunctions. Um, just be careful with that energy, that's all. Um, really learn about it and you can trip the energy. So just be aware of that. And as long as you guys continue to have a lot of shared values, you guys are gonna be fine. Now we're gonna look at oppositions. Jenna's Mercury opposite his Mercury. Now this is a huge conflict and it doesn't have to be. Pretty much what it means is that the way that you think and communicate <laughs> is at odds. The way that you reconcile this needs to be tactful. You need to have mature conversations on how you communicate with each other. Otherwise you may resent each other and you don't want that, right? I know on the videos, Jenna will like, you know, be yell, Jillian, like, you know, it's, it's, that's what makes it hilarious, right? But in day-to-day -day real life off camera, um, <laughs> those little moments where you feel at odds in your thoughts and in your communication style, um, <laughs> just study each other and talk about how to reconcile it. Cause that can be a point of opposition, right? You have one major opposition in your chart. It just means that if you're not aware of it, it can become a, an issue. Um, so just be aware and know that that's in your chart and be like, okay, cool. You know, when you're fighting, be like, okay, cool. Is this a Mercury opposing Mercury moment? <laughs> and then you can both be like, yes, this is a moment where our Mercuries are opposing. So let's just chill out and figure out what to do next in a calm manner. <laughs> so for Julian, your North Node in Capricorn in the sixth house, you need to really work hard and give Capricorn energy to 
your sixth house activities, discipline, maturity, just being a boss about your sixth house activities will lead you towards your life path. So, you know, this, this makes a lot of sense because the things that you do on a day to day help you get your work done. And that is exactly what you're meant to do. And I see, you know, I see you working hard, Julian. I see you. I follow you just as much as I follow Jenna. Jenna's North Node is an Aries. Jenna's North Node being an Aries and being in line with his Aries son, like, that just to me means that she's meant to be compatible with his personality. Despite, that's why she finds him so charming, I feel. Because it's her life purpose to vibe with that energy. You're already doing it. You guys are doing a really great job. Your compatibility is incredible. And I think that you're just the quintessential YouTube couple that everybody wants to be. And, you know, I know you guys are genuine people. So I know it's not fake. We can all see the love. You know, you might have a little few things to work out. Make sure that you do preventative measures to keep you both happy. But as long as you're aware of that, then everything will be fine. <laughs> Your life paths match up. Yeah, so I hope that I helped clarify some things. And if Jenna and Julian watch this video, I just want to directly say to you, I love you very much. Thank you for doing what you do. I have been watching you as role models and I watch all your videos and even though I'm not a gamer and I don't watch the whole gaming side of you guys, I still love you. <laughs> Thank you for letting us in on your birth charts and letting us kind of analyze your relationship and like be under the microscope of scrutiny because that can be, you know, a little bit scary and alarming and I think that you're comfortable doing it because you know that we all love you and you've created a really, really strong relationship with your audience. And it's really admirable. Not everybody has that. Knowing where you came from, like the way your videos used to be and the way that you used to be as a person and then watching you grow up is just like a blessing. And I hope to be watching you for a bajillion more years in the future to come. <laughs> Um, so anyway, I will be now starting a series on this channel. Like I said, thank you to Jenna and Julian for encouraging me to start the series that I wanted to start anyway. So um, the next person that I'm going to do a birth chart for is Shane Dawson. So stay tuned for that. I'm going to go through his birth chart. It's going to be much shorter than this video because he doesn't have sinistry. Oh my God. Maybe I can do uh, him and Ryland if the Shane video goes well. So, so yeah, um, subscribe to this channel. I'll be uploading new astrology videos, analyzing YouTubers, analyzing stars. And um, thanks for watching. I hope you guys have a great day. Je Jenna, when you get pregnant, when you get pregnant, like that's, that's like, I don't know if you understand how the internet's gonna feel when you get pregnant, Jenna. And this is no pressure to Julian, but you know, regardless, when Jenna gets pregnant,